Would you pray with me for a moment? Lord, help us to be open to your spirit. As we read scripture and as we speak words, let your spirit speak to our hearts. In Christ's name, amen. Decades ago, in the middle of one of those things that we as humans do in farming, which is called stripping the land in terms of crops, there was a problem of great erosion across the south, and somebody decided the way to control that was to bring in a plant that would help hold the soil in place. And so they brought in a plant not native to our country called kudzu. I don't know the Latin name of it. I probably used to know it at one point. And they thought this is a wonderful plant in order to contain the soil and cut the, down the erosion. And it did. Kudzu now spreads over the entire southern part of this, southeastern part of this country, and it covers the land, the telephone poles, the trees, the houses if you let it. It has taken over. And it's really not much good other than that. But it keeps the soil in place. It does exactly what it was asked to do. Now, I've seen kudzu all over when we're down there, and it strikes me as being a, um, when you first see it, you think, oh, what a gorgeous plant with the large leaves and covering, and then you talk to the people that try to fight it. So I'll give you the example out of my own life. The north side of our house is shaded with large trees, many of them. Nothing much grows there, and right along the driveway that goes behind the house are these plant boxes that somebody in their wisdom designed into that architecture on the outside of the house. And nothing much grows in them either because it's so thoroughly shaded. And anything you put in there on that side of the house, you have to work very hard to get it to grow at all. So we decided at one point when we had some work done on the house that we put in some English ivy because English ivy will grow most places, but everybody told us, well, it doesn't do well in Michigan winters, so don't count on much. That was 15 years ago. Now, outside of the fact that the ivy now fills the plant beds, has gone around and covered the patio on one side, uh, started down the side of the house, um, covered the chimney. It's also spread around beside the house and now goes around beside the deck, is up on the fence, cover, going over and starting to go up the trees in the side yard. And when I'm not careful about pruning it two to three times a year, let's see, um, when the workmen came to work on and reshingle our roof, they found that there was this whole mass of ivy, pale yellow from lack of sun, in the attic. It had gone up through the soffit in the attic above our family room. It's gone through the vent when we weren't using the chimney, through the ash door and up the chimney, and I saw some sticking out the top of the chimney, some leaves growing out above the cap. I found a chute in the family room and had gone around the window frame, one in the guest room. And of course, like that mustard tree in Jesus' parable, our cats are greatly entertained by the robin, that is, the pair of robins that have built their nest and are raising their young in the ivy on the chimney right outside the window. Nothing else, at least we know where the cats are all afternoon when the robins are in the nest. And if you're not careful with ivy, it will do immense damage to the structure, but it covers the ground very effectively in all those spots where nothing would grow when people told us nothing would ever get through that clay. The ivy has filled the yard, and it is gorgeous. And it is a wonderful plant to have in places where nothing grows otherwise. It even hides the ugly places that I haven't painted on the house. Well, I pull that image together because we hear Jesus' parable talking about the kingdom of God is like the mustard seed. And, you know, we, we see these little pendants you can buy that have a little tiny mustard seed in them you wear around. And some of us, if you do a lot of cooking, you'll have 
regular mustard seed that you can grind up to use for seasoning. Although most of us, you know, we like it when it's already ground and mixed and it has a little label called French's on the outside. But you can see the mustard seed and we have visions of the kingdom of God as like that little seed and we, don't we, we envision the oak tree, don't we? You know, the majestic mustard that, that we see there, we think that's this huge, wonderful, gorgeous tree. Well, you know, actually the mustard plant that Jesus is talking about, it's a weed. If you get, in that area of the country, world, if you get a mustard plant in your yard, it's like the kudzu or the ivy. It spreads everywhere and covers everything. If you don't, if you aren't careful, it will take over your entire existence. And maybe that's what Jesus is talking about. Maybe what he's trying to tell the disciples is, what happens with the kingdom of God is that a seed is planted. And when you're completely oblivious to what's going on, when you're not paying attention, when you're sleeping, when you're going about your business, when you're busy with your other things, the kingdom comes in and fills every corner of existence. It can take over your entire life. It's not this huge, large tree that you go and visit occasionally, that you take pictures of and show to your relatives about, see the tree in my yard? It's that pervasive existence that covers everything, that, that fills in the spots in your life that you forgot to paint, that where nothing else will grow, it thrives. And it provides a haven for others to be part of your existence and your presence, because the, the kingdom is everywhere. It changes how we see this, because so many of our images, when we see them, we hear about trees and shrubs and vines, we picture them the way we know trees and shrubs and vines, carefully pruned and shaped to fit our image of how our home should look. And Jesus is talking about something that just grows wild and unchecked, that takes over everything in your life. You see, the kingdom of heaven, the kingdom of God, when it is once planted in your soul, you have no control. That's frightening for us to admit sometimes. But once, once God is there, God is the one who is at work. It isn't what you or I do. It is what God is continually doing. It isn't how you or I plan our lives. It's what God does with us. 